Hello guys, how are you? David DeFranco here from DavidDeFranco.com with my as promised Ask Me Anything video that is all about the HP Sprout. Now the HP Sprout, which I unboxed about a week or two ago, I'll link it right below in case you missed it, that is easily, without a doubt in my mind, one of the most innovative and unique computers I have ever used in my life. It's actually so unique that I consider the HP Sprout to be in its own category. That's how different it is. But to make the HP Sprout a little more understandable for you, my audience, I am going to go through 15 questions from you submitted over at facebook.com slash David DeFranco. And the first question comes from Jess Shoemaker. Jess says, not sure if this question was asked before, but I am very curious how this functions in creative interactive presentations. Does it help make video embedding and rearrangements of items easier than copy paste drag actions? Also, does a dual screen function allow two separate projects to be created, worked, and saved from one program, such as Photoshop or PowerPoint? Thanks, David. Okay, Jess, to answer this question in the simplest way possible, think of the HP Touch Mats, which is the bottom portion of the HP Sprout, which again supports up to 20 touch inputs at once, which is just incredible. That surface right there is simply a secondary display. That's all Windows thinks it is. The only reason it's unique is because the HP Sprout knows it's an actual touch mat. So yes, you can rearrange things pretty quickly, but only in apps built for the HP Sprout. So with that said, for your usual programs such as Photoshop and PowerPoint, Microsoft Office, all that good stuff, PowerPoint's part of Office, but you get the point. No, the HP Sprout technically doesn't add extra functionality via the touch mat. But you have to keep in mind, the touch mat, like my setup behind me, is simply a secondary display, like I mentioned before. So it simply comes down to what you're looking to get out of the HP Sprout. That secondary display could be used for Netflix or Adobe Illustrator while you're running Adobe Photoshop on your primary display or a PowerPoint up here and Word down here or even just a Windows 8 tile interface down here like I prefer to do and web browsing and Photoshop, all that good stuff on the primary display. Still though, excellent questions. And the next question comes from Nyan Saxena. Nyan says, hey David, how does the HP Sprout contribute to your content creation and graphic designing? Is it better than having a graphics tablet like the Wacom ones? Wacom, 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 whatever. Nyan, this is a great question. I kind of answered this previously, so I'm just gonna say this. It honestly has had no impact on my content creation or graphic design or anything like that because I use a secondary display for Netflix, for the Windows 8 tile interface. So I simply use the HP Sprout to extend my Windows 8 experience and use my primary display as just that, my primary display for Photoshop, web browsing, email, social media, and all that good stuff. Because, well, honestly, at the end of the day, I'm still going to use my Mac Pro for my serious work. But that doesn't mean the HP Sprout is not capable of serious work. I'm just simply an OS X person. But the HP Sprout is, without a doubt in my mind, the fastest and most impressive Windows 8 computer I have owned to date. And I am enjoying it very much. Next question comes from Ellie, who just happens to be a fellow spon sponsor, patron. It's kind of the same thing if you think about it. But Ellie, thank you so much for your support. Ellie says, how good is the quality of the 3D scan when it scans an object? Well, let me just start out by saying this. The 3D scanning functionality is one of my favorite features about the HP Sprout, but unfortunately, the 3D scanning functionality is not that impressive with complex objects. For instance, I tried to scan a Toon Link plushie. It didn't do a very good job, but it does a much better job with simpler objects such as, I don't know, like a box of cereal or an Apple TV, or maybe even my iPad mini. The point is, do not rely on the 3D scanning functionality of the HP Sprouts to be, you know, too serious of a feature. In my opinion, it's more of a, a fun little thing to show off to your family and friends. Next question comes from Mac Hodgson. Mac says, do you find it awkward sometimes to keep looking up at the screen and then down at the table off and on? Yes and no. Yes, because I'm not used to looking up and down on a computer. I'm used to looking left and right, like with my setup behind me. And no, it's not awkward because it's simply a new experience. I'm just gonna have to adjust to it over time. And honestly, I'm kind of used to it as it is. If anything, you just gotta be careful with the touch inputs on the touch mat because I have found myself to be clicking on things by accident. Nicholas, 
let's just say Nicholas, because I don't want to mess up your last name. Nicholas says, is it worth the $2,000 price tag? How can HP Sprout help you personally get creative with its features? Well, number one, is it worth the price tag? That's completely relative to your experience and your budget. I mean, I can't say whether something is worth it to everyone. I will say this though, right, Maui for me or something. It's definitely expensive. It's not cheap. And again, keep in mind, it's a very niche computer. It's in its own category. So in my opinion, the HP Sprout is meant to be in creative studios. It's not really like a home consumer kind of computer. I mean, even though it can be used as one, but I just picture the HP Sprout being in offices and art galleries or anything that applies to that field. And then secondly, can the HP Sprout help you personally get creative with its features? Using the official apps that support the HP Sprout on the touch mat? Certainly, but it's not to the extent that I'll ever get creative with like, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, or anything like that. Excellent question though. Kieran Bly says, overall, is this system good for photography edits and tweaks? Thanks for the amazing content, keep it up. Thank you, Kieran. Great question and simple question at that. Yes, it's extremely good for photography edits and tweaks, just as long as you continue to use the primary screen for editing. Do not rely on the touch mat because the color reproduction is not that great. It's a little blurry here and there. It's not that it's a bad feature of the product because it's actually incredibly unique and fun. It's just, if you're gonna get serious work done, you will be using the primary display and nothing else. Next question comes from Liam Green and Liam says, what's it like to use the setup like it is? What's it like not using a mouse and keyboard? Well, I will say this, the HP Sprout, despite what HP advertises in their promo videos, does include a mouse and keyboard. And I gotta say, the included keyboard is very nice. It's got that chiclet key design. The mouse, on the other hand, is okay. I mean, it's nothing amazing. It does the job. I mean, hey, it's wireless. It works great. I really have no complaints. But in terms of the overall setup, I like it, just as long as you have a desk that's built to withstand its features. For instance, my white desk in my living room is a regular desk, but it has a pull-out keyboard and mouse tray, which I'm not usually a big fan of. I like having everything on one surface, as you can see behind me. But in this case, that desk is technically better for the HP Sprout because the touch mat is so big as it is, that basically takes up so much real estate. So it is really nice having a dedicated space under that surface for just my keyboard and mouse. And Michael Eng says, do you think the computer is more for business use or could it be more used for a home computer? I read that incorrectly. But Michael, to answer your question, it could definitely be used for both, but I think it's more of a creative business computer. Next question, David Becker, HP Sprout or the new Apple 5K iMac? They are two completely different computers, so I'm not gonna choose one over the other because we all have different preferences. John Puttifer, Puttifer, sorry. Could you see yourself doing future work projects on this? To a certain extent, yes. But as I made clear, this will continue to be my primary workstation. The HP Sprout has no effect on what I will be putting out in the future. But with that said, I'm willing to experiment. I'm willing to see what the HP Sprout has to offer that's unique. Something that's basically standing out from the competition. And believe me when I say it, the HP Sprout stands out like a mother. I mean, this thing is its own product, its own category, its own niche. It's so unique. But as of right now, I don't see the HP Sprout offering anything unique that will significantly impact my creative workflow. Next question comes from Cole Grinder. Cole says, is the product fast enough where it would be good for things like Photoshop and video editing. Guys, I can say this with confidence. Hell yes. The HP Sprout, it's got a Core i7, eight gigabytes of RAM, terabyte hard drive. This thing is plenty fast enough for your everyday tasks and so much more. Whether you're a simple email user or an advanced video editor or a graphic designer or an illustrator or a photographer, I can guarantee you the HP Sprouts can handle it just fine. Because don't forget, at the end of the day, this is just a very powerful, regular computer. It just happens to have a built-in projector and the included touch mat. Next question comes from Jeremiah Vasco. And Jeremiah says, can you upgrade the RAM and or hard disk drive on it? What are your thoughts on the projection touch part? 
So Jeremiah, I believe, yes, you can upgrade the RAM and hard drive. I did a quick Google search and I found an answer on your um, HP support forums. I have not done it personally myself and I probably never will, but according to the sources I found, yes, you can upgrade both the RAM and the hard drive. And by the way, I'm pretty sure it has a fusion drive. So that's pretty cool. But in terms of my thoughts on the projection touch part, I've talked about that previously, so I'm just gonna go to the next question. But either way, thank you so much for your question. I'm just simply trying to save time. And Vinny Sims, he comments on like all my videos, so thank you so much Vinny for your support. Vinny says, what is your favorite feature of the HP Sprouts David DeFranco? Well, Vinny Sims, my favorite feature is the secondary display and the fact that I can project anything I want on the touch mat. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Watching Netflix right down here while having my entire primary display open for getting work done, that's huge. And I will be talking about that more in next week's review. Ashley Stinton says, how is the overall performance of the system? It's very fast. It's fast. Oh, and by the way, it's just a little fast. Seriously, again, Core i7, eight gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, it's a killer system. It just happens to be unique in the process. Oh, and by the way, in terms of gaming, the HP Sprout, it does a pretty good job. I was playing BMNG, which is a very, very CPU intensive game because it's all based on physics. Like it is the most realistic car game you'll ever play. And by car game, I mean automobiles in general, cars, trucks, whatever, because it's a simulation of vehicles combining with other vehicles or obstacles such as trees, cubes on maps that you can create yourself. And the HP Sprout did a pretty good job. I had to decrease the graphics a bit and decrease the performance just a little bit, but it did a pretty good job and I got maybe like a solid 20 to 25 frames per second. But in terms of older games like the original Portal, I was using Fraps and I think I had like over 150 frames per second, which obviously makes sense because Portal came out years ago, but I promise I will be trying other games on the HP Sprout in the very near future. Maybe not intensive games like Far Cry 4, but maybe like Far Cry 1 and Far Cry 2 and anything else that you guys can recommend. So please leave some titles right below. And by the way, if I could get them for free via Steam, that would be great. So let me know that as well. And the last question comes from Konstantin Konev. Konstantin says, what quality is the projection? Is it HD or is it washed out and grainy? Thanks. Constantine, this is a great question. Quality of the projection looks fine when playing video for, you know, such as Netflix or playing some kind of visualizer on iTunes or anything like that. Okay, if you're showing motion on the projector, it's gonna look fine. But when it comes to reading sharp text or photo editing or, or doing anything productive on that touch mat, you will definitely notice that it's blurry and it's grainy. I mean, it's exactly what you would expect from a projector, at least one that's attached to a computer because I'm sure there are very, very expensive projectors out there that are built for home theater and they look far better. But you gotta keep in mind, this is a very powerful computer that again, just happens to have a projector built in as well as the touch mat. I was gonna say 20 touch input touch mat, but that's okay. But I will say this, for what it is, the quality is not bad at all, especially considering how I use it. And that's primarily just to use a tile interface of Windows 8 and to watch Netflix. And it does a great job. So that is that. You guys had some seriously awesome questions, so thank you so much for asking them. But of course, I am still just scratching the surface, guys. The HP Sprouts, it's unique. It's very unique. And it's honestly going to be a tough product to talk about in my review, but I will do my best. So guys, if you have any ideas for that video next week, just post them right below. Comments, feedback, questions, anything related to the HP Sprouts, let me know what you think. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to check out my mentioned links right below in the video description, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.